Welcome to Part B of Prepare Financial Statements. In Part A, you learned how to prepare the income statement, both the single-step income statement and the multi-step income statement. In this part, you'll learn how to prepare the statement of stockholders' equity and the balance sheet, and I also will show you the completed statement of cash flows. Now you're ready to prepare the statement of stockholders' equity. Please take out a scratch piece of paper and use the adjusted account balances on the following page and the net income from the income statement you just barely prepared to prepare a statement of stockholders' equity, which is also known as the statement of shareholder equity. Here's a formatting hint. Label it with the company name, specify that it's the statement of stockholders' equity, and also specify the accounting period. Once again, this will be from March 1st, X1 to December 31st, X1, because we just barely started the company in March 1st. In future periods, it'll be for a year ended December 31st. The first column will be your common stock. The beginning balance, we had no common stock issued and outstanding. Then we issued some common stock, and we're going to include the number of shares in one column and the dollar amount related to those shares in another column to arrive at your ending balance. Retained earnings is a little tricky because the beginning balance will come from the adjusted trial balance. However, that retained earnings will not yet have been adjusted for net income less dividends. It's here on the statement of retained earnings that you'll arrive at the ending adjusted retained earnings that will go on the balance sheet. In this case, we started with no retained earnings from the past because it was a brand new company. We're going to add the net income from the income statement, deduct the dividends to arrive at the ending adjusted retained earnings, which will go on the balance sheet. The accounts to be used from the adjusted trial balance are capital stock and dividends. You'll also include net income from the statement of retained earnings. You will not show all this detail on the statement of retained earnings, You'll just show the net income being added. Same as shareholders' equity or stockholders' equity is quite simple to put together. We explain how common stock changed and we explain how retained earnings changed. We started with no retained earnings because it was a brand new business, but then we added this year's net income, deducted this year's dividends to arrive at the ending retained earnings, which will go on the balance sheet. Common stock, we just issued 1,000 shares for $100,000 to give our ending common stock. These ending balances are going to appear on our balance sheet. Now you're ready for the balance sheet. Please take out a scratch piece of paper and use the adjusted account balances on the following page and the ending retained earnings balance from the statement of stockholders equity, specifically the statement of retained earnings, to prepare a classified balance sheet as of 1231X1. Here's a formatting hint. Label it with the company name, specify that it's a balance sheet, but the date will be as of the end of the accounting period, December 31st X1. Under assets, you'll put the current assets together, total them up. Non-current assets, total them up. Add the two to get total assets. Total assets should then be equal to total liabilities and stockholders' equity. Under liabilities to be classified, you'd have to classify them into the current liabilities and the non-current liabilities, total them up. Under equity, you classify by the contributed capital and the earned capital, total them up to get total stockholders' equity. Total liabilities plus total stockholders' equity will give you total liabilities and stockholders' equity, which will equal total assets. I've already put in the classifications we did before, so you could quickly and easily find your current assets, contra assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, and non-current liability, as well as your equity account. The one that's not on this list is the ending retained earnings. You have to remember that because retained earnings was zero, so I didn't include it on this list, but we now have an ending retained earnings that you will need on the balance sheet. Good luck. Here's the asset side of the balance sheet. As you can see, we took all of our current assets, added them up to get total current assets. One thing that's a little unusual is we have the gross receivables, and then we had to deduct its contra asset called allowance for doubtful accounts to arrive at net receivables. But if you add all these numbers up straight down, you're going to get to 182, 190. Then we moved on to our non-current assets. Once again, we had to take equipment minus its contra asset for accumulated depreciation to get its book value. Same thing for buildings to get its book value. And our total property equipment is 203, 700. Take our current assets, add to that our non-current assets, and we have 385890 Now, if our liabilities and equity don't add up to that number, then we've done something wrong. Let's go on to page two. All of our current liabilities added up, 
60,134. Long-term debt, 160,000. So our total liabilities are 220,134. Here's the common stock and retained earnings from the statement of shareholders equity. To get total stockholders equity, 165,756. If you add your total liabilities and your total stockholders equity, you get total liabilities and stockholders equity of 385,890. Looking back on the assets, 385,890. Our balance sheet balances, which it should have because our adjusted trial balance balance. It appears we've done that properly. Let's step back and look at that balance sheet from the most fundamental level, which is the balance sheet equation, which I introduced in the very first video of this course. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Total assets, 385,890 equals liabilities, 220,134, and equity, 165,756. Those added together give us 385,890, and we are in balance, yippee. In this course, I do not have the time to teach you how to prepare the statement of cash flows. That will have to come in a later course. The key point is the statement of cash flows explains why cash changed from the beginning of the period to the end of the period. And it is explained by the operating cash flows, the investing cash outflows, and the financing cash inflows. All those added up explain the change in cash during the year. Since we started with no cash, the change in cash actually winds up being our ending cash. In future periods, we will have a beginning cash balance and the change for the year will be added or deducted from that. One thing you should notice is that accrual basis net income said we earned $71,696, but the actual cash brought in from those operations was 106510 meaning accrual basis net income is not the same as your cash inflows from operating activities. Just so you can see that a little bit better, I've broken it out into page one, that's your operating activity cash flows, and page two, which is your investing and financing cash flows. That's how you do it. That's how you prepare the financial statements. I hope the process made sense. I hope you've actually taken some time to try to prepare those on your own because the best way to learn this stuff is to try it out. So what I would recommend at this point in time is to go back to that adjusted trial balance and see if you can come up with the same financial statements except maybe the statement of cash flows which we haven't taught you how to do yet. Good luck on the quiz.